welcome to All Saints Sunday, a day when we remember all the saints who have gone on before us. And so today I'm coming to you from uh, the kitchen off of our great hall because I was reflecting on all of the receptions and potlucks and community events that were prepared at this counter island here. That were cleaned up in this space. All the dutiful saints of this church who made sure everyone felt welcome and nourished and fed and loved and connected, who spent hours at this washing machine getting their church Sunday best clothes a little bit damp and a little bit dirty just to make sure that our community could function together and that people who were grieving could have some little morsel of comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone. And so this is our communion table today. Because in some ways, there is more sacred work that happens here than around the pulpit. In some ways, this is where church happens. And so as I offer you these words of welcome, I welcome more than just the people who are signed on to this video feed or sitting out in the lawn. I welcome everyone that you carry with you in your heart. Every person whose memory is lodged in your mind. All the people that we have loved and lost who can't be with us today in person, but are definitely with us in spirit. Because this table isn't just for you, it's for all of them. When we come to the communion table together, when we come to worship together, we are leaving behind chronological time and we are entering God's time, Kairos time, which is that all things at all times and all places happening together simultaneously. So we are in communion today with more than just the people in our immediate vicinity. We are in communion today with all the saints who have ever gathered throughout history around this metaphorical spiritual table and all the people who will in the future gather together around this table whom we have not even imagined in our minds yet. So who are we to deny anybody access to this sacred moment? Who are we to deny anyone access to the sacred table? Who are we to dictate God's invite list? And that is why we are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, because no matter what you look like, talk like, think like, love like, learn like, believe like, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are both welcome and celebrated here as a beloved child of God. Friends, welcome to worship. God of unimaginable forgiveness, your Christ and courage that we should reconcile with our neighbor before we approach the altar. So what outstanding wrongs do we need to right, O oh God? What iniquities have we inherited from our forebears? What saints have we forgotten from our whitewashed histories? What systems do we prop up without seeing how they hold our neighbors down? Has our exhaustion bred apathy or fatalism? Help us to be honest with ourselves about our missteps and our limitations so that we can co-create authentic pathways to healing. May we have the grace to engage in places we have avoided for far too long, for that is the only way through to a true peace. And when we can't find the right words, give us the words your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our words of assurance today comes in the form of a song. It goes like this. We are no longer strangers and aliens. We are no longer foreign, now we're neighbors. We are citizens with the saints. We are one in God's refrain, preaching peace and making plain. We're built together. That song is a musical adaptation of Ephesians 2 which is a scripture that says, for Christ came to preach peace to those who are far and peace to those who are near. Christ came to tear down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. For we are no longer strangers and aliens. We are citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So no matter what you think you've done wrong or no matter how you think you've been wronged, no matter how you think you've messed up or how you think you've been messed up, know that God forgives you and loves you and blesses you and sees you as a member of God's household, a citizen with the saints, especially on this All Saints Sunday. And if you feel forgiven, if you feel assured by this good news, say amen like you mean it. Amen. And in the coming weeks, no matter how vicious it gets, divisive it gets, hostile it gets, no matter what injustice gets thrown out into the world, remember, we are citizens with the saints. We are one in God's refrain. Preaching peace and making plain. We're built together. We're built together. Amen.
My name is Morgan Airy, and I started attending Spring Glen Church on Christmas Eve last year. As someone who had spent the past eight Christmas Eves as the Christian Education Director at local UCC churches, I was looking for a space to celebrate the birth of Christ where I would be able to be mostly unnoticed, and yet knowing Pastor Jack from our time spent together at Silver Lake brought me a sense of comfort and belonging. Holidays are often a time of joy and celebration, but for many they can also bring forth a feeling of sadness as we are surrounded by the memories of loved ones we once celebrated with. For many, Christmas and other holidays are spent mourning the loss of loved ones who have passed, And for others, we are mourning the loss of relationships with loved ones whom we once celebrated with. As we celebrate All Saints Day, we can take the time to celebrate the lives of those who wait for us in heaven and for those who wait by the rainbow bridge for us. We can also take this time to celebrate the people that have come into our lives and help shape who we are, even if they remain among the living. Each one of us is already a saint right here on earth. We have the power to bring love and hope into one another's lives, and we continue to have that power. We must live every day understanding that we are God's children brought together to love one another, if not for a lifetime, for a moment that can forever impact someone else's life. I am grateful that on Christmas Eve, when I expected a level of anonymity among the congregation, that that evening I received a Facebook message from Becca Stevens, who recognized me from gatherings with friends and welcomed me to Spring Glen. It was a moment of great love at a time when I was feeling great sadness. I was able to attend Spring Glen for many Sundays between January and March and was able to reconnect with several people from my past and was welcomed by members of the church, making me feel connected to this community. I look forward to continuing to worship with Spring Glen Church virtually and in person as we are safely able to do so. 1 Kings chapter 17 verses 1 through 16 and 17 through 24. Now Elijah of Tishbite of Tishbe of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these days except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn eastwards and hide yourself by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the wadi. But after a while the wadi dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath, and he came to the gate of the town. A widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that spoke by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, Give me your son. He took him from her bosom, carried him up into the upper chamber where he was lodging, and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times 
and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. The life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber into the house, and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. So today, our passage gives us sort of two sides to the same coin. Two characters, two people uh, that have very different circumstances and yet very similar circumstances. And have, see if you can map yourself onto either of these uh, thought processes. So first, we have the Elijah mindset, which is like, my... My troubles, I've got some troubles, but like they're not as bad as other people's troubles. So I'm just, I'm not going to bother anybody with them. I feel guilty asking anybody for help, especially them. Like they're, they're really struggling right now. So I'm just, I, I can figure it out myself. Don't worry about me. I can, I, I'm, I'll be fine. Raise your hand if you're, you fit into that category. Obviously I can't see you raising your hand, but I, I know some of you fit into that category because you say it to me all the time. It's like the funniest thing to have people reach out to their pastor and be like, oh, I don't want to bother you. You're probably, you're probably really, you know, got a lot going on and you, you don't need to worry about me. Like, That's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm supposed to be worrying about you, right? <laughs> I appreciate the grace that you're offering me and understanding that like life is really hard right now and I'm way behind on everything and you know, whatever. But Okay, mindset number one, that's Elijah. (laughs) My problems are bad, but I don't want to bother this other person. So, mindset number two, the widow. I don't have anything to get. Like, I'm so exhausted. and Like, I just can't take on anything else. I I, I mean, I've got all this stuff going on at home, and I'm I'm not even, I'm barely surviving, barely keeping my neck above water, and just like... uh, I'm just stretched in so many directions. But I can't, I just can't right now. I, I'm sorry. I just don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I, I, you, you don't want me. You want somebody else. Raise hands. Anybody? Anybody? Again, I can't see your hands. But I know you are in this boat because that is the path. That's like 90% of the pastoral care that I'm offering right now. It's just that sense of depletion, sense of exhaustion, sense of anxiety. anxiety. And the, the reality is both the Elijah and uh, the widow are just like, are experiencing the same sense of depletion. Right? The, the, the widow's physical food containers might be physically low, but both of them are just running on fumes. So many of you may be feeling that same sense of like, exhaustion in your personal life, right? Like just trying to get through day by day and also like Aunt Jane has some diagnosis and like we lost Cousin Bill and we're, you know, my friend is on his deathbed and we're, I'm having this fight at work and in, in, my, in our house we're just constantly arguing because the stress is so high because of all the tech issues and I, I, my depression has come back and our, our, our money is low because of the, you know, COVID and like, there's just so much and then also there's like the constant threat of death and pandemic and oh hey, there's an election coming up this week that could radically alter the fabric of society or not depending on who you talk to and believe. Like, the sort of, like, complex overlapping of both our personal and communal lives. It's just constant level of present anxiety and tension. Sense of depletion. Just like the widow and Elijah. So they existed in this time where the ruler was the most... Uh, declared by many the most unjust ruler ever. The Bible actually says he was the most wicked king in the history of Israel, uh, which is saying something because they said that about his father too. So he must be really bad because he was worse than the worst. (laughs) 
And then there's also this widespread climate disaster that they're dealing with multiple countries and drought. No food, no water, and the most vulnerable are even more vulnerable. And death and mortality is right on everybody's minds. Like the constant threat of your life being at risk. It just, whew. Does that, does that, sound, does that sound relevant, this ancient scripture? Is that, is that anybody struggling with these, these same sort of topics? So God offers two different paths for these two different mindsets. One, he sends Elijah, the most prominent prophet of his day and even still today. And he says, go way out of your way. Go across rivers, go into other countries and find this woman who is so unimportant, we didn't even give her a name. We'll just call her the widow from Sidon which means he knows two things about her. One, uh, she doesn't look like him, talk like him, think like him, pray like him. She is, quote unquote, the other, the enemy. And two, she is the most vulnerable. She's a widow with a child in a society that offered basically no pathways for success and self-sustenance and even survival for women on their own. He had to humble himself so greatly as a man whose decrees could alter the direction of history, reform the nation in, in, in new ways. And here he was humbling himself, putting himself in, at the mercy of a woman who had nothing and was known by nobody and wasn't even quote unquote one of us. So on the other side, we have the widow who when asked for help, when approached for help has like a totally understandable like scarcity mindset, like it goes into a sort of self-protection mode. Like I, I barely have enough to make it through today. Like, I'm about to make my last meal ever and then my child and I are gonna starve to death and you're asking me for food? Who are you? Like, I would insert a few choice words that you might get me in trouble for saying on here, right? I'm sure there, there, were, there was some anger, but resentment. But she says, well, she sort of in their conversation changes her mind, has a change of heart and like says, well, what do I have to lose? So she goes and she makes him some food and turns out there was more. And then there was more for the next day and the next day and there was more for the next day. And however many days it was until God could send rain to renew the agriculture and revive the people, replenish the resources. So while Elijah had to humble himself, the widow learned that you know, we are capable of more than we realize, of greater generosity than we realize, that God will empower us in ways that will surprise us, that we will surprise ourselves and our ability to, to dig deep and step up and help when we didn't think we had it in us. So whether you are the Elijah who has convinced yourself that, you know, your problems aren't worth bothering somebody else for, or you're the widow who has convinced yourself that you have nothing to give, it turns out the solution is to reach out, to go out of your way to ask for help, and to go back and look and realize you have more to offer than you realized, more to offer than you ever thought possible. Turns out the solution is to come together. Turns out the solution is that God wants us and is calling us to come together and be there for each other. Turns out when things are looking bad, we need each other. 
And it's easy to feel like, wow, this is unprecedented times. Nobody has ever faced anything like this before. And then you read scripture like this and you're like, oh no, Elijah and the widow definitely faced things like this before. And God helped them through it and they helped each other through it. So friends, I invite you to reach out when you need it. Whether it's to me or the other staff or each other. Your, your best friend from church or the person you barely know from church. That we are here, we're in it together. That's why we've created these regional groups. That's why we have the small group ministries. That's why we have these online services. That's why church exists for moments like this. Amen? Amen. something in the news this week that was surprising? I did. It's not about what's on everybody's mind in terms of the elections, but it was about a discovery in a national park in New Mexico. And what was discovered was the longest track of fossilized footprints. It seems to be of an adult carrying a child. And they also, the scientists also found that it looks like these two crossed paths with a woolly mammoth. The fossil is 10,000 years old. When we think about this scientific discovery, it helps, to put, helps us to put things in perspective. We humans have been a long time coming and going, walking and being carried and carrying others as we grow to maturity. And they didn't have an easy trek. They crossed paths with danger and kept on going. In this season of stress and uncertainty, let's remember the long line of those who walked before us. Let us honor the ancestor, the native peoples, 
the persons of every generation who were children of God, even if they did not call God by the name that we do, Abba, Father, Mother. Let us keep this in mind as we pray together. Let us come and join our hearts and minds in prayer. O oh God, the world is swirling, and within it we are caught in anxiety. We are worried about the pandemic weighing down on our relationships, our health, our safety, and our economy in crisis. There's no end in sight, and just the thought of that brings on new rounds of fear and resignation. Into this mix is the election day, now just days away, in our divided country, where we are afraid not only of the results, but the reaction to the results may cause even more division. How do we find our way through? How do we cope when we cannot find the usual paths to peace, to being centered, to the actions that make a difference and bring about a just society? All that we knew before is thwarted by the virus, which makes it harder to gather, to be in community, and to find the solace of shared song and prayer and presence. Each day we try to do our best, but on some days we have to admit we don't even know what that could be. And so, dear God, we come to you in our need. We share it with you, and we believe that in so doing that we will gain perspective and even hope. Remind us, remind us that we are not the first to encounter the wilderness of the unknowns. We are not the first to walk this way. Many humans, probably every person who's ever lived at some time had to walk the way of uncertainty and fear, of hardship, war, struggle, and even defeat, and kept on walking, kept on fighting, kept on keeping on so that they and their loved ones could continue, could survive, and that those who would come next would flourish. We are not alone, and we affirm that we are not going to stop, no matter what the future brings, to do the work that we are called to do as disciples of your Christ, the one that you sent to show us a better way of love and compassion and justice, to show us that we are connected to you and that we are able to do more than we thought, love more fully than our own power, and give of ourselves as he did. O oh God, on this particular day, this All Saints Day, we look to those who have died, witnesses to you, witnesses to the faith that brought them through their lives and brought them through to you. We lift their names to you in sacred remembrance, we grieve their absence, and we hope, as they did in the promise of resurrection, that they are now with you in your nearest presence. And we lift their witness to our minds and our hearts to fortify us for this journey. We are not alone, and like they who have gone before us, you are with them and you are with us. Today, O oh God, remind us of the long view that you were even before creation and that in your love and power you animated the world and brought us to this day. And we believe that you will bring us through despite our fears of what surrounds us, that we can be infused by your powerful spirit to continue to hope to work for the coming of your realm, for that is what your Christ has called us to do, and we are here now to answer that call with a resounding yes. And we do answer with the yes of hope in Christ's name. I invite you now to take a deep breath in. Breathe in and out. One more time, breathe in. And out. And in our breathing, may we feel the presence of that great cloud of witnesses who came before us and whose spirit continues to watch over us 
in all the days of our lives. And we remember that communion didn't start as some formal ritual. It started as a gathering, as a meal, as an opportunity to remember the story of our faith, to have some tangible experience of being nourished and sharing our blessings with each other. So it is in that spirit that I invite you to put your hands out towards whatever food is around you, whatever drink is around you. And if you don't have any food or drink, put it out towards your neighbors, put it out towards the video screen. I want you to bless something right now. Channel the energy of that great cloud of witnesses, channel their love, and imagine it flowing through your fingertips as we pray together. Friends, let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you knead yourself into this bread, that you dive deep into this cup, that we might be nourished both in body and in spirit, connected to those who have gathered around this table for generations, for millennia, and those who will continue to gather around this table for ages to come in your name, in the name of the Christ who gave himself over into this life. Amen. Turn it over now to Essence to tell us and remind us of that ancient story. For I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Friends, all things are ready. Come, let us be nourished together. I invite you to partake in whatever food or drink you have. And know that we are in this together and that you are deeply loved. Our closing anthem comes from Southern Connecticut State University Choir in partnership with Spring Glen Church's Choir as well uh, to offer you a virtual anthem that will also feature uh, photos and names of those who have died in, the recent, uh, in this past year, but also in years past uh, whose names were submitted by their loved ones. If you didn't get a chance uh, to submit a name or a photo, or if you, uh, you know, have, have somebody weighing on your heart and on your mind today whose memory you want to uplift, we invite you, we will invite you at the end of the uh, anthem to put their names uh, in the comment threads uh, and chat features of our various platforms. May you be blessed this day.
God, we have offered our thanksgivings and we express deep gratitude for the covenant of communion. We thank you for the sustaining love as seen in the embodiment of Christ. May our gratitude to you offer us more opportunities for greater generosities as was seen in the lives of all the saints that came before us. Amen. Good morning. I wanted to share why I give to Spring Glen Church. It's because Spring Glen has embodied God's love for me in good times and bad. Some of you know my son, Evan. He was and is a much desired child. My first husband, Kenny, and I struggled with infertility for seven years before Evan was born. And at the time of his birth, we were not going to a church. We had both grown up in the church. We had visited a number of churches in the area, but we weren't connected with Spring Glen Church in any way, except that I was friends with Lynn Andrewson through work. Lynn knew about Evan, and she shared our happy news with Spring Glen's associate minister at the time, Nancy Strickland, who reached out to ask if she could bring us a baby blanket that had been knitted by a member of the church. I still have that beautiful green blanket. When Nancy came to our house to deliver the blanket, she found out that at the same time we were experiencing the joy of Evan's arrival, we were struggling with shattering news. Kenny had been diagnosed with cancer the week before Evan was born. Nancy visited us multiple times during Kenny's illness, both at the hospital and in our home. And I know that members of Spring Glen prayed for us, even though they did not know us. Kenny died just a few weeks after his 39th birthday when Evan was just two years old. Nancy helped me plan his service, which was held at Spring Glen Church, and she helped to officiate. Hannah Leckman sang, and Therese played the organ. Spring Glen Church helped our family celebrate Kenny's life and mourn his loss. And we also experienced love and caring from members of the church because we received meals that were delivered by Dick and Shirley Edwards. I started attending Sunday morning services at Spring Glen regularly at the beginning of Advent that year and found myself drawn to Pastor Brenda's sermons, the choir's music, and having time for quiet reflection. Joining the church was the right decision for me, but I remember feeling very emotional about it because it was the first big decision I had made without Kenny. Evan and I found a really supportive community at Spring Glen Church. Evan was baptized here soon after I joined, and he participated in the children's choir and Sunday school, and I enjoyed connecting with friends in the pews on Sundays and at church events. I especially appreciated the activities at Christmas. As a single mom with a small child, the pageant and Advent festival and potluck were fun activities that helped me feel less alone and showed me that we could create special memories in our new normal. Fast forward several years, and Spring Glen Church was the site of another big life event when Peter and I got married. It was a beautiful October day with the sun streaming through the sanctuary windows, and Pastor Claire performed the ceremony, Therese played the organ, and Kathy Q. Lee sang. And once again, Spring Glen Church helped our family as we moved into a new chapter in our lives. I sometimes say that my experience with Spring Glen has been a bit out of order. First a funeral, then a baptism, and then a wedding. But Spring Glen has been more than just these really big life moments. There have been many more ordinary times that still have been so special and have added to the richness of my life at Spring Glen. Things like coming to see the wonderful plays put on by the Theater Arts Ministry, playing in the handbell choir, meeting every Thursday night for a solid two years as part of the Senior Pastor Search Committee, and feeling the love and connection with my fellow committee members, teaching Sunday school and seeing how eager children are to learn and have fun and be together, and enjoying the beautiful music and thought-provoking sermons during worship. When I think about my gift to the church, I think about what my money combined with yours makes possible. 
Because of our gifts, the church's ministers can provide care to people during life's joys and sorrows. Because of our gifts, the church can provide programs that help children and adults grow and learn and make new friends. Because of our gifts, the church can ensure a safe, welcoming building for the sacred celebrations that surround births, marriages, and deaths, as well as the more everyday activities, like the meetings of so many different community groups, Sunday school, choir rehearsal, and fellowship hour. Because of our gifts, the church can spread the news of God's love to the wider community through its actions. And I think that's true in times that feel more ordinary and the times that we're in now. Because of our gifts, the church, whether the building is open or not, can spread the news of God's love to the wider community through its actions. I felt invited in and supported and loved by Spring Glen before I was even visiting. And I have felt that way since the time that I first became involved with Spring Glen. That's why I give to Spring Glen Church. The theme for this year's stewardship campaign is based on the hymn In the Midst of New Dimensions. The song evokes the scriptural imagery of God as rainbow, fiery pillar, leading us through turmoil and uncertainty. We invite you to be that pillar for our community as we strive to be God's rainbow sign of hope for the world. Pledge cards have been mailed to members. Please email melissa at springglenchurch.org if you didn't receive one. And if you did receive one, you can mail them back or simply email stewardship at springglenchurch.org by November 15th with your pledge for 2021. Friends, I'm so glad that you worshiped with us today. If you feel called uh, to be like the widow and offer what little you have to the world, I invite you to go to springglenchurch.org slash give uh, or send checks to the church to help us be a life-giving, life-changing uh, ministry, a vibrant community of faith and image of God's open and, and affirming heaven here on earth. And I invite you to join us for our live Google Meet prayer session and fellowship time uh, after worship as usual. Uh, and if you would like to submit a prayer, email prayer at springlandchurch.org. Uh, and if you want to know what's going on in the life of the church, like the women's retreat uh, that's ha a pin pal situation happening, or uh, upcoming campfires, or small groups, or book groups, or there's so many things happening uh, in the life of the church that are safe and either socially distant or online. So make sure to check your weekly uh, email. Uh, similarly, as we start to head into colder weather and as cases start to rise, make sure to check your weekly email to know what changes are happening for our in-person options with worship um, and whether they're moving inside or we might take a break for a few weeks if the numbers have an unexpected super spike. Um, and so with that, I offer you this blessing. May you remember that you are not distant to us, that you are connected through a spirit, through God's spirit that is as close as our own breathing, that you are a member of the household of God, that you are citizens with the saints, all the saints, the great cloud of witness that has gathered with us today and every day. And in this way, may you be blessed that you might be a blessing unto the world. And PJ, what do we say? And if you feel blessed, amen, like you mean it. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Now mail, text, email, or phone it on to your neighbor.